Lacey Fletcher. When the Fletchers moved to a house in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, their new neighbors were introduced to the father, Clay, the mother, Sheila, and their daughter, Lacey. When the neighbors suddenly stopped seeing Lacey around the house, they all simply assumed that the young lady had gotten married and moved to another part of the country with her husband. The neighbors couldn't have been more wrong throughout that whole time. Lacey lived miserably in her parents' house. She never stepped foot outside the house for 15 years. By the time anyone discovered she still lived in that house, it was too late. Around 2 a.m. on January 3rd, 2022, Sheila frantically called 911 to report that their daughter had stopped breathing. Shortly after the call, police officers arrived at the home in Baton Rouge. The officers were immediately met with a foul odor once they stepped foot in the house. Everything initially appeared normal until one of the officers laid eyes on a moldy sofa drenched in urine and feces. Upon closer inspection, the officer noticed the body of 36-year-old Lacey Fletcher melted into the sofa. She was naked except for a t-shirt pulled above her chest. The entire body, except the neck and head, was submerged in a hole in the sofa. This hole in the couch was formed from the weight of Sheila's body over the years, as it was determined that she had been in that same sitting position for over 12 years while urinating and defecating there. Her buttocks were covered with ulcers that left the skin completely rotten. There were feces on every part of her body. Her face was covered in red, bloated spots. Her hair wasn't any different with feces and maggots found in it. The officers were utterly shocked by this horrific scene. They were even more surprised by the Fletcher's countenance. They reported that her father was emotionless and her mother bowed her head, just crying a little bit. This wasn't the reaction expected from parents whose daughter had just died in such a horrible way. Also, the parents didn't seem phased by the gory sight in the house, as a pile of neatly folded laundry lay on the right side of the couch, while Lacey's emaciated body sat on the left side of that same couch. Tests conducted later showed that Lacey had contracted COVID-19 and weighed only 96 pounds due to starvation. Investigators discovered that Lacey had not been examined by a doctor in over a decade. Her parents even went on vacation to celebrate New Year's Eve, leaving Lacey to fend for herself, and returned on January 2nd. Sheila said that she fed Lacey a sandwich and Cheetos when they returned home, then slept off in the living room. When she woke up around 10 p.m., Lacey was dead. Medical examiners concluded that Lacey had died from starvation and neglect. Lacey was born a healthy baby girl to Clay and Sheila Fletcher on November 25, 1985. Her parents were respected in the community and regularly attended church programs and services. Sheila was a police clerk and court clerk in Baker. She later worked as an assistant to the Zachary City Prosecutor. Her husband, Clay, was an employee of a Baton Rouge Civil War Round Table, an NGO dedicated to enlightening people about the sacrifices made during the Civil Wars. When Lacey turned nine, the family moved into a two-story home, the same one where she was found dead. Their neighbor, the Blade family, moved to the neighborhood four years before the Fletchers moved in. The Blades described Lacey as a joyful girl who enjoyed having fun. About 10, 15 years ago. I don't really remember exactly, but a long time. And, and what did she look like? I don't know. She just looked like a young woman. She was, uh, she had these little, little, what do you call the little weights that you hold in your hand? The little dumbbells? She was exercising. Yes, she was, she'd walk from her house around the circle and she used to do that, you know, I don't know, two or three times a week. She was friends with their son. However, they began observing some unusual behavior in her as she grew older. In her teen years, 
she still enjoyed the activities that would interest only toddlers. Lacey started to isolate herself from everyone. She initially attended Brownfield Baptist Academy, a neighborhood school. Lacey was a member of the volleyball team, and she participated in several school activities until she was diagnosed with social anxiety disorder. As her anxiety worsened, she struggled to communicate with her peers and make friends. Her parents withdrew her from school in the ninth grade and began homeschooling her. At the beginning of her homeschooling, her parents enrolled her in therapy sessions with a licensed psychologist. However, the sessions only lasted three years. From there on, Lacey was rarely seen by anyone. It was as if she had fallen off the face of the earth. Their neighbor stated that he last saw Lacey 15 years before her death, exercising in front of her family's house by lifting small weights. Ten years after he last saw Lacey, he asked after her from Clay. Blade assumed she had married and moved away, but Clay told him she still lived in the house and was fine. Clay didn't explain why she was never out of the house and Blade didn't ask. Sheila's parents claimed that Lacey had locked-in syndrome, a neurological disorder where a part of the brain is damaged. This condition affects the nervous system, leaving the patient completely paralyzed except for the control of the eye. The coroner in charge of the case would later refute this claim that she had locked-in syndrome. Her parents claimed that as Lacey's condition worsened, she chose to remain in the living room and refused to move from the spot on the couch so they let her be. It was revealed that in 2010, her parents visited a doctor seeking advice on handling Lacey. The doctor instructed them to bring her to the hospital for a medical examination. The consultation ended without any form of medical assistance rendered to Lacey. Her parents revealed that they began feeding her on the couch. They also provided her with a portable potty since she refused to move or use the toilet. However, she didn't use the potty and instead relieved herself on the couch and floor. Her parents said they got really worried for her at one point and considered securing a commitment order to put her in a medical facility. However, they never went through with the plan. When asked why they never got her medical help for 20 years, they said she was never sick and was sound of mind until her death. They claimed she never complained about the filth and ulcers and Sheila cleaned them from time to time. Dr. Ewell Bickham, coroner of East Feliciana Parish, performed an autopsy on Lacey. The autopsy results showed that there were feces in her nostrils, foam in her stomach, sore wounds all over her lower body, and her body was infested with maggots. He ruled the death a homicide caused by neglect that had gone on for over a decade. In his words, the death was caused by severe medical neglect, which led to chronic malnutrition, acute starvation, immobility, acute ulcer formation, and osteomyelitis, a bone infection which led to sepsis. The case was so horrific that the coroner added, I couldn't eat for a week after seeing Lacey. I've seen a lot of gruesome things. Nothing could have prepared me for this case. As a coroner, no other crime had ever affected me. Pictures of Lacey and the couch were so disturbing that the state would later provide medical personnel on standby to attend to any possible medical emergency that people may develop after seeing the pictures in court. Sheila and Clay were arrested for their daughter's death and held at the East Feliciana Parish Jail. A judge then set their bonds at $300,000 each. Just 24 hours after their arrest, Sheila made bail. The following morning, Clay was also released on bail. Following their release, a jury decided that there was enough evidence for the couple to stand trial for murder. So, they were charged with second-degree murder. Two months after, they both pled not guilty to the charges. The trial was initially scheduled to start on February 6, 2023, but it was moved to June 19, 2023.